Live from the internet, it's the Dr. Tom the Frog Show! Hi-ho! This is Dr. Tom the Frog, and you're watching the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, where we talk about RPGs. Uh, I am I'm so excited to have on Emily Careboss from Black and Blue Games. How are you, Emily? Hi, Tom. I, I'm good. Um, it's black and green games, though. I, <laughs> I don't know if that makes any difference, but it's green like you are. Oh, oh, well, I'm sorry about that. I hope and I haven't bruised your ego. Uh, no, not at all. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, I've got some notes here from my production assistant, Monkey, that we should lead off the questions here. Uh, I need to ask you, what's your favorite color? Um, you know, it's funny, because I'm, I'm split between blue and green as my favorite colors. Um, because green is so beautiful. It's like you, like frogs, and like the trees. And, uh, but blue is so beautiful and calm, like water and the sky. So black and blue or black and green, I guess those would both work for me. Ah, pretty cool, pretty cool. Now, uh, I, I'm curious about that because I understand that you've got a game, um, it's about driving on snow called Breaking on Ice, is that right? <laughs> um, it's a little bit like driving on snow. It's about falling in love. So, you know, you get kind of like out of control when you do that too. It's uh, called Breaking the Ice. <laughs> oh, Breaking the Ice, like at a party. Oh, yeah, exactly. That's right. Yep. Mm -hmm. Now, Andrea, uh, when she was on with with, with Yona uh, at a previous episode, she mentioned that Breaking the Ice was one of her favorite. She played 75 oh. games. Whoa. 75 games last year. Huh. And, and she said Breaking the Ice is one of her favorites. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. That's, that's high praise then. Definitely. Yeah. I'm curious, though, this whole asking the favorite color, what does that have to do with breaking the ice? I, I don't understand the puzzle. <laughs> well, in the game, it's a two-player game where you're playing these two characters that are going on their first three dates, and you see if they fall in love. So um, when I was thinking about how people would make the characters, I thought that starting with the character's favorite color might be a good way to sort of break the ice there. Um, and then you use that color, you, you pick a color for your, your character, maybe their co favorite color is purple, and then the two players go back and forth and they create sort of a, an association word web around that color, and they say things that make them think of that color, like, you know, they might think of purple, and they might say purple and think of grapes, or royalty, or... Um, luscious velvet or something like that and then when you've made a bunch of words then you decide what your character is like based on that like maybe the character really loves wine and they're a connoisseur and that's that's how you figure out who the character is that you're going to play oh no that's really great because you know starting from a blank piece of paper that's really hard yeah exactly the first time I played it I played with my friend Vincent and I said so Vincent who's your character going to be and he just stared at me <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who is this person? So I went back to the drawing board and came up with the favorite color thing, and it works much better. I, I have to ask, though, what's the replay value? Because my favorite color is always green, which means money, which means all of my characters are filthy rich. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, you might play with a different person, and since there's always two people who are making up things about the color, then you're always going to have a different set of things that'll, that people will think of. Oh, okay. Well, so playing with different people, I, oh, I can do that. <laughs> That's right. Now, I, I, am, I am curious, though. I understand that you're you're actually got three romance games. This is a big thing with you, and, and it has nothing to do with experience points or killing. So I'm, I'm a little bothered by this, but I might be willing to try it, I guess. But <laughs> anyway, what's going on there? Well, um, it kind of came out of writing one romance game. I wrote Breaking the Ice. And then I realized, oh, wait a minute, this is just a two-player game. What if there's three people playing? You know, or what if there's a five-player group and they want to play something and they want to play my romance game, so what would they do? So um, I said, well, why don't I write one two-player game and one three-player game? That way you could have odd numbers of groups. And, uh, so, and then I said, wait a minute, but I've got an, an idea for another romance game that could have more than three players, so why don't I just write three games? 
And that sounded so easy at the time. And then I realized that every game was going to take a little while to write. So I wrote the first one and put it out. And then I wrote the second one, Shooting the Moon. And then a couple of years later, I put out the last one. But that I had to wait until I'd played a whole bunch of other games that where you get up and walk around and you know pretend to be people. Um, and that fit a really well for that game. So um, I had to wait like three years before I could write these three games. And and you don't actually kill anybody in them. I mean, it's it is more about like you know seeing how the characters fall in love. Or um, you might like shooting the moon though. It could be in any genre. And then you just figure out why you know maybe these characters are pirates. And then you see how love would fit into that kind of actiony adventure story. Um, so that that might be more up your spe your alley there, Tom. Okay, I I could totally get into some like love pirate frog action. <laughs> Definitely. Cool. Now you're going to be you're actually getting them together for some kind of re-release. That's right. It's been ten years since I put Breaking the Ice out. It was in 2005. I can't believe it. It's been that long already. Um, so right now I'm working on revising the games. Um, just having run them for so many years, there's a few little, not really changing the rules as sort of smoothing them out and maybe making them run a little bit smoother. And, um, and I'm going to put them together in one volume, which is what I'd sort of wanted to do at the beginning, but it took me a while to come up with each of the games. So now people can buy them all in one book, or rather, when I get it done, they will. Um, but I've done a lot of the work on the revising already. Um, and then what I'm going to do is add with each of the games some different ways to play, like maybe um, once, you know, a couple of the games take a lot of dice to play, so I'm going to work on writing it so they don't need dice at all. Um, and some of the games can have different settings, so I'll include those so that it, people who already have had the games at the past might want to buy the new volume because there's extra stuff in it. Oh, man. Unlockables. Is this going to be some kind of crazy Kickstarter that gives, it just goes crazy with all the extra writers? And <laughs> I'm actually thinking that I'll just do the revisions and then put it out. I might do a pre-order sometime later in the year. But um, I'm going to work with some friends to write some introductions and to write some retrospectives. Um, and there are some folks that have been giving me really good feedback that I'm going to sort of fold into the game. But for this particular uh, project, I think that I'll just just do it in a sort of a more quiet way. I've got some other crazy Kickstarter stuff in the future that I'd like to do for a fantasy game called Heart of the Rose that I'm working on, because that one, I think it would be so beautiful if I could get, work with some amazing artists to do lavish illustrations. Um, the game is very in influenced by fairy tales and will have sort of a, a deeply magical kind of feel, so I think it would be really great to be able to have some really gorgeous color illustrations, which I cannot do. Um, so maybe maybe a little later in the year you can look for some Kickstarter action from me. You know, I've got I've got a thing about fables because there's that whole princess and the frog thing. Yes, and the golden bowl. That's a really great story. I, I say it's a little offensive. I mean, it, it kind of oh. says you don't you don't want to be a frog, and like That's there's true. something wrong. I think that maybe that that fairy tale could use some updating. Yeah, it should be princess and the rat because nobody wants to be a rat. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you, you've told me enough now. Now it's time for a serious question. Are, are you okay. ready for a serious question? All right. Uh, yes, I am. All right. I'm dying to know this one. Rhinos. Are they actually just overweight unicorns? <laughs> That's a very good question. Thank you. My crack writing team got it right on that one, and, and now you have to tell me in your expert opinion. I'm a doctor, so I already know the answer, but you can oh, tell me okay. your opinion. Okay, okay. Well, you know, there's a lot that they talk about with unicorns liking virgins, right? Back in the Middle Ages, and it was all like, oh, the virgins, the unicorns will come out. I, I don't know. I think I'd have to see if we could hang out with some rhinos and see if they're crazy about virgins. And if not... Maybe that whole virgin stuff is hooey, and unicorns and rhinos are the same thing. Um, so I think that more study is needed on this. But I think it might be possible. It might be true. There you have it. I, I think she's on the right track. Virgins and unicorns, that's exactly where I went with it. So Really? Yes, I, I have a paper coming out. <laughs> Excellent. Well, I look forward to seeing it. Well, Emily... I just want to say thank you so much for coming on the Dr. Tom the Frog Show. It was super fun having you. 
Thanks so much, Tom. Take care. Have a good night. You just watched the Dr. Tom the Frog Show, and we hope that you liked what you saw, yo. But if it was a big waste of your time, well, it's free, so that's not a crime. But if it was a waste of your time, yes, it's free, so that's not a crime.